God bless each and every one of you. It's so good to be here today. I am so happy about what God is going to speak to our hearts today. How many of you here really love Jesus? Amen. Amen. I am so honored again to be here. I always love uh, being with my family today. I see some of my family back there, some few station back here. Uh, we love you guys so much. And we thank you again um, for taking the time out. Let's give our Pastor Al and Sister Vivian another hand. Let's bless them because they are tremendous um, leaders. And I'm so honored to be um, their friend, actually. Um, they're, I'm so honored to be their brother and sister. I'm going to use this here today. See what happened when you anoint it? Everything fall apart. Okay. All right. Yeah, I want to use this today so I can um, really maneuver because God is going to really bless your hearts today. So I hope you guys are ready. Hope you love scriptures because we are going to um, look at some great scriptures today that God is going to speak to our hearts. So I'm excited today because uh, one of the reasons why I'm excited is that God woke us up this morning. I always say that we never know when is our last day. I don't like to take um, when I was younger, I used to take life for granted. I used to wake up and just feel like I was supposed to wake up. Now I'm realizing that everybody uh, don't have that. I mean, some people, again, while we were sleeping last night, some people just did not wake up. And they had plans just like you to go to the park after church. And, and it was their expiration date. So last time we were together, we talked about a little bit of the expiration date. Uh, today, um, I always ask the Holy Spirit, um, what does he want shared when I speak? And so um, the awesome thing about what we're going to talk about today is who in here really, 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 really want to experience the abundant life that Jesus said that we can have? OK, we're going to talk about that tonight. I mean, not tonight, Lord. Y'all pray for me. <laughs> It feels like last night. <laughs> uh, but I just want to share because um, I believe in our culture, um, when people hear the word abundant life, we immediately run to um, houses and cars and things like that. And that is a part of the package deal if that is your desire. However, um, true abundance happens when we die. Uh-oh. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about coming alive by dying. So please write that down. I'm about to come alive because I'm about to die. <laughs> well, y'all should look at your faces. Y'all like, I don't want to die. Don't be telling me I got to die. Well, well let's live, listen to what Jesus says because Jesus tells us that true life starts when we die. And so I'm going to show you proven uh, proven facts, proven truths through scripture, through just nature itself, that everything that has life, life is always trapped inside the thing. So um, I'm honored to be a, uh, a life coach in, in, in my company. And one of the things that I'm passionate about doing is helping people to, uh, to steer people to their creator so they can find their life purpose because everybody's looking for what is it that I'm here to do? That's like the number one question. Why am I here? Why did I, um, what am I supposed to be doing with my life? Uh, so most of the people that I work with, um, they are at a place in their life where they don't want to waste time anymore. It's like, okay, I want to do what God called me to do. I want if, you know, I don't want to just be living through this life and not really doing what God called me to do. So one thing I've noticed though, is that uh, when I was seeking my purpose some years ago, I was seeking my purpose, but I was seeking my purpose trying to avoid dying to myself. And what I learned was I couldn't find it, Sister Lori, until I finally told Jesus, not my will, but your will. And it was in that moment that the thing that was trapped inside me, Brother Rob, came alive. Isn't that something? <laughs> But I was trying to avoid that death sentence to the flesh. And when I was doing that, 
I was not living, even though I was breathing. I hope this makes sense. So do you have a lot of people taking the air, you're breathing, you're driving a nice car and dying on the inside. Then you have some people who's dying to the Lord and living. Isn't that crazy? Everybody's seeking peace. And I wish it was as easy as going to Walmart and just walking down aisle three and saying, uh, can I have two bottles of peace? You know, <laughs> those bottles of peace will run out so quick because everybody's seeking it. But it only could be found in Christ. So let me show you some scriptures. So please open your Bibles because y'all Jesus disciples. Uh, so Jesus disciples is connected to the word of God. So let, let's let's start with because uh, we're going to go through a lot of scriptures today. And let's give God praise too for the worship today. Thank you, uh, Sister Cheryl, for uh, blessing everyone today. Um, let's go to uh, St. John chapter 12. And uh, we're going to start and we're going to talk a little bit about um you know, life begins when we die. And I'm finally at the place in my life where I told the Lord, I am, I, I want to please you. I don't want anything here to be more important than saying yes to your will. The moment there is something else I'm trying to grab that is more valuable than, than doing what God called me to do. That is not a good place because you're not going to ever be at peace, even though you may come to church. And I'm and and you're speak and, and I know I look young. Um, I, I know I'm a I know I look really young, right? <laughs> She's like, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know I've been in this thing a long time. I mean, I'm a I'm a I'm a old young looking person. If that makes sense. <laughs> so I always trick every time I go travel, especially over the country, over overseas, I always ask when I speak to young people a lot of times, I'd be like, how, how old y'all think I am? And I normally get about 30, 30 in my mid 30s or early 30s. And I'm like, praise God. I like y'all. I'll be giving them all dollars and stuff. I'm like, thank you. Good. Say that again. Say that again. And then when I told them my real age, they'd be like. <laughs> and I told them, I said, the reason why I look young is because I died. <laughs> life begins when you die but when I was trying to live I was looking old because I'm so busy working five jobs to pay for a car to pay for a house to do all this I'm just killing myself grinding my back is hurting headaches every day and I'm in my 30s looking old and then I get in my 40s and I say yes Lord and I'm looking young how did that happen? Maybe it's because I finally am going to do what scripture says. So look at what he says here in St. John chapter 12. We're going to read verse 23 to verse 27. He says in verse 23, and Jesus said unto them, the hour is come that the son of man should be glorified. Verse 24 says, verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, everybody say, but if I die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Verse 25, he that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Verse 26 says, if any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there he shall also be my servant. If any man serve me, he, him will my father honor. And then verse 27, look at this. He says, now is my soul troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this cause that I come. So he starts off by saying, in verse 20, uh, in verse 23, the hour has come that the son of man should be glorified. So that sounds good. If you heard somebody say, hey, I'm about to be glorified. It's, it sounds like a good thing. But he ends in verse 27 and says, my soul is getting heavy, is getting troubled. You know what he's saying? When you are getting ready to die to what you want to do, that soul of yours is not going to like it. Them emotions go be like, uh-uh. No, 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 no. I'm not doing that, Lord. That's your soul. But your spirit is like, God, I want to please you. But that soul is saying, you know what? That's too much work, God. I don't want to do your will. 
so there's always this fight between flesh and spirit. And we're going to see that in Galatians chapter five, which I'm going to ask you to turn now to Galatians chapter five. I'm going to give you these scriptures. Then we're going to uh, walk through this for a second. So Galatians chapter five just kind of shows us how the quicker, uh, you know, the struggle that you're going to be going through as you're dying is pretty much the flesh and the spirit. OK, so Galatians chapter five, and we're going to read verses. Um, let's go. Let's read verses 14 to 16. It says, um, for all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Verse 15, but if ye bite and devour one another, take heed, ye be not consumed one of another. Verse 16, this I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So in verse 17, it's going to tell us what happens for the flesh lusts against the spirit. So what's taking place anytime God wants you to do something that is going to it's going to uh, connect with your spirit It's going to agree with your spirit. But that flesh part of you, which is connected to that soul. I mean, this is we call this uh, flesh right here. But the thing that control this body of yours is your mind. And that mind is connected to the soul. So watch this. So the moment God tells you, <laughs> I'm going to give you a perfect example. The moment God tells you to pray for your enemy. Uh oh. <laughs> Who in here, when you have to pray for your enemy, your flesh, your soul is like, yes, I get to pray for my enemy. Woo. <laughs> so you saw what just happened. He tells us to do this spiritually, but immediately we have a war. Because I don't feel like praying for the person who just hurt me. I don't feel like forgiving the person who just offended me. So you see the fight that's happening. So Jesus says, but listen, if you do forgive them, you start to live. If you do pray for them, then you come alive. We're trying to avoid doing what the spirit want. And that's why we're not living. And the thing the spirit wants to do always is going to make your flesh hurt. <laughs> so Jesus is our ultimate example. So he pretty much said, you know what? Though my soul is troubled, what am I going to say? I'm not going to go to the cross now. This is why I came. So you mean to tell me now I spent 30 years here on this earth. Then my ministry began Three and a half years, I'm affecting people, healing people, laying hands on people, speaking to demons, casting demons out. And now my soul want to say, I don't want to do why I came. He's like, I can't do it. So Jesus says something. Th this is something that's amazing. Jesus is like, no, no, I have to do this because the son of man has to be glorified. Uh Oh, this is about to get deep. So I need you all to sit up for this part. Look at this room. It's, you see all these wonderful, beautiful faces. We would not be here, just so you know, if Jesus wouldn't have died. So because he died, look at the life. It is a true principle for you. There is some people waiting for your ministry if you die. There is thousands of people that is waiting for Matt that only Matt can touch. I can't reach him. God want Matt to reach him. So God says, Matt, can you please die so you can come alive and be a blessing to all these folks? And the fight is going to be, Matt, can you die to Christ? Because that's when he's actually going to find his purpose. <laughs> In John, he says, except the corn of a wheat falls into a ground, it abideth alone. I did a test on this scripture. I had what and bought me a seed. I really did. This was a, I preached this years ago. I went and bought me a seed and I put that seed that has all of this fruit inside of it. I put that seed on my shelf for a year and guess what I had the year after? I had just the seed. 
so I can pray, I can fast, I can rebuke the devil all I want, but nothing go happen to the seed until it what? <laughs> so you see what we're doing? God bless me, but I ain't going to the ground. God, just, just use me, Lord, but I don't want to. He's like, it don't work that way. Your prayer is not going to produce the fruit. Dying does. This may be too deep for some of us on Sunday morning. <laughs> because we're trying to avoid going in the ground, Brother Rob. <laughs> and that is when life began. So Jesus was like, y'all getting excited that I'm casting out demons and stuff now. He's like, wait a minute. I'm not going to be here long. I need to die because greater work shall y'all do. He said it ain't going to happen until I die. And so when the devil thought he finally got him, Jesus is on the cross and we celebrated it last week. Jesus is on the cross dying and the devil and the demon was like, yes, we finally got him. <laughs> not knowing that life began the moment he said it, it was finished. He dropped his head and guess what? Now the Holy Spirit came back, filled 120 in the book of Acts, and then a revival broke out because of a death. <laughs> Can you imagine? So let me, okay, let me use me for a second. Let me use, let me use uh, crazy old me. So Back in the day, I had, I, I think last time I, I was speaking to y'all, I had some dreams in my life. I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And, and, and man, I, I had my life planned out, y'all. And some series of events kind of took place <laughs> that made me say, um, I'm kind of unsure if that's going to happen. Now I'm in a depression in my life. And, you know, I was suffering three years of depression because and one of the reasons why I suffer from depression, um, I, I think uh, some of y'all Jesus disciples may understand now why I suffer depression, because I was a seed sitting on a shelf. <laughs> Twelve albums, three books, 1000 music students and sharing around the world was trapped up in a seed. That's why I was depressed. Because I was sitting on a shelf when God was like, you got all this on the inside of you, but you won't die. <laughs> so the, all I had to do was say, yes, Lord. And it was so hard to do it because nobody want to, uh, you know, hurt themselves. But let's look what Matthew says. Everybody turn to Matthew chapter 16. Because I need you to see this. Because we're living in a time now that everybody is trying to avoid denying ourselves. And that is when true life began. So let's look at Matthew chapter 16. And let's look at what happened here. We're going to read verse 21 to verse 26. Matthew 16, verse 21 to verse 26. Look what it says. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem, and watch this, y'all, and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed. Y'all see that? Be killed. And be raised again the third day. Look at verse 22, because we all got family members and friends like, like Peter. Then Peter took him and said, oh, no, that ain't going to happen. You ain't going to die. Don't die to yourself. Don't be praying. And you need to stay out with me and let's watch social media. Let's go travel the world. Forget, forget church. We don't need all that stuff. You don't have to do that. You don't have to die. Jesus loves you. Yes, he does. But you're still not going to live until you die. So Peter, who was close to him, tried to stop him from dying out of, I don't want you to hurt. And look what happened. So Peter took him, verse 22, so Peter took him and began to rebuke him. Oh, have anybody been rebuked by? Uh, oh, never mind. Don't, don't answer that. 
<laughs> that Peter took and rebuked them and said, be far from it, Lord. This shall not be. You ain't going to go through. Have you all heard anybody preach that? If you serve Jesus, you ain't going through. We were talking last night at Fuel Station about suffering. And we, we have to understand that it comes with the territory. Once you say I'm on Jesus team, you have uh, another uh, you, you're on the football team. The, the enemy already is looking at you like, OK, let, we, we getting him. So we were sharing last night that when you get tackled in football, you don't get mad. <laughs> why would somebody get why would Josh Allen get mad if if the San Francisco 49ers tackle him? He comes into the game knowing because I have an opponent, it comes with the territory if they hit me. <laughs> so if you serve in Jesus, just know that, listen, this, it comes with the territory for the devil to hit you. So when he hits you, don't be like, oh, the devil busy. He's supposed to be. <laughs> like, that's why we said, think it not strange concerning these fiery trials. Don't think it's strange. You are on Jesus team. Jesus, anybody who's representing Jesus, the devil has got a bullseye after you. And what God does so beautifully, and he, this is how he did it for me. I don't know about y'all, but I used to be the type of person that um, like back in the day when, um, cause I used to hate to, well, I, I know how to swim now, but back in the day, I didn't know how to swim. I, I was, I almost drowned as a young, uh, young boy. So I kind of got nervous about being in water. And one time uh, when I was in high school, we used to have swim class. And I even remember that um, my our swim teachers always say, OK, guys, y'all got 45 minutes. And I was always the one. All my other friends would come out the locker, Brother Robin, just run and dive in. Me, I was always the one to go like this. <laughs> and then it would start with the toe, then ankle, then calves, and then to get to my knees. And watch this. And then by the time I got to my waist and the water started feeling good and I was ready to enjoy and I'm ready now to go under the water. I hear Shh, everybody out the pool. I'm like, no, I'm about to enjoy it. But my time ran out because I took too long to get in. <laughs> So that's what Jesus is saying. He says, he's like, if people can kind of just jump in, the quicker you lose your life, you go find it. And we're spending most of our Christian life trying to avoid losing it. <laughs> and what I'm realizing is that it is one of those things that we got to get to the place where we just say, you know what? The quicker I die, the quicker I live. Now watch this. Look at what he says in verse 23. But he, Jesus, turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Wow. Peter is telling Jesus, you're not going to go through. And then Jesus says, Peter, you're not talking. This is Satan speaking through you. Because the, the devil is trying to keep me from dying. And he wants to use the closest people to my life to try to keep me from dying. Who is the devil using to try to keep you from dying? It is somebody very close to you. That's how the devil work. Because the devil knows if they die, they come alive. So I don't care if they're a seed on the shelf. They're not touching nobody. They're not affecting nobody. He don't care that you're a seed. Just don't get in the ground. So when I finally got in the ground, I shared the pool story because I wanted to show you how back then I was the type that I was just taking my little time, taking my little time. And then I got to the point where I said, you know, wait a minute, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. And I started reading the scripture and I started realizing, OK, the devil likes me doing this. Let me get a little Bible scripture reading this week. I'll pray one day this week. And the more we doing this, the devil's like, <laughs> inside her, she has a whole hospital 
for missions all over the world inside her and it will never release because she's so busy doing this. <laughs> and like Brother Rob said, and soon the whistle is going to blow. And when, then when you finally get your purpose, you're like, oh my God, God want me to open up a, a medical campus over in India. The rapture comes. <laughs> because you were. He said, just jump in. Let me show you what I can do if you die. So inside this room is a bunch of seeds. The thing I'm nervous about is none of us know what's in there but the one who put you here. Isn't that crazy? So if I really, if we really, really, really saw what was inside Cheryl, y'all wouldn't let the woman get out the door because y'all would need her autograph. <laughs> because y'all would be like, she was sitting among us all this time. Everybody in every nation is listening to her music, and she was leading worship in our church every week, and we just walked past her. Hey, Cheryl. Hi. Hey. 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 Because you didn't know what was in there. So when she died, all of a sudden, people singing her songs all over the world, and we're like, is that the same Cheryl I know? <laughs> if y'all knew what was inside Brother Rob, <laughs> everybody will want to shake his hand. It does sound something like this. When Jesus died on the cross and, and he, he actually closed his eyes and the scripture says the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom. Y'all heard that story? It, it was so much, the earthquake was so great and the scripture says, the, one of the Roman soldiers says, oh my, he truly was the son of God. He discovered it after Jesus died. So your dying is one of the biggest blessings that you can do. So if you're looking for your purpose, my word of encouragement to you is die to Jesus today. And then it comes up. Then he starts showing you things. So I remember when he started showing me all this stuff that I'm doing. I'm going to be honest. I was like, I don't know who that dude is. I don't know who that is. And he began to show it to me in dreams, visions. And I'm like, that would not be me because I don't want to do that. But if you look at the trees in your backyard, th those apple trees, um, you know, me, me and my brothers, when we were young, um, you know, we used to, there was a neighborhood that used to grow them. Um, I don't know if they were cranberries or grapes or something. And we used to, you know, hop the fence, tell the truth, shame the devil. <laughs> we used to hop the fence in Jesus' name. <laughs> You know, eating somebody else's grapes. I don't know who, they, but we were just eating them. And then something hit me. This big orchard, this big vine came out of a seed. I'm over here enjoying these grapes or whatever that fruit was. I'm over here enjoying it. But if that seed wouldn't have left the shelf, it would have died alone. And many of us is dying alone. And I ain't talking about single or married either. Because <laughs> people think I'm lonely. You could be single and married and be lonely. If you don't die. <laughs> I was both. And I'm going to tell you right now. I was, I was single and I was frustrated and miserable until I died. And then I died while I was single. And I became, I'm like, man, I, I like this. And when I, was, when I was getting happy about liking my singleness, that's when I was with my wife. I'm like, wait a minute, this is all, you bringing her now? <laughs> I'm enjoying this, this life of, this life. Well, the reason why I'm enjoying it, because I died in my singleness. Now watch this, then I get married, then I die in my marriage. And now the marriage is coming alive. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. So there is no stage that you can't avoid dying. So most people think, when I get here, then I'm good. No, when you get there, you got to die greater. Because there is no life that will come out when you're trying to save it. Let's go back to the scripture. Look at, and, and so we're still in Matthew 16. And he says here, 
in verse, uh, let's look at verse 24. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, how many of y'all have came after Jesus? All right, so this is talking to us. If any man come after me, let him do what? Come on, I want y'all to say that loud. Let him do what? What does deny himself mean? To die. Because we think denying ourselves is, I'm going to deny myself this chocolate cake. Oh, God, this chocolate cake. I'm going to show the Lord I love him. I ain't going to eat this chocolate cake and I'm going to deny myself. Well, it means that, but he talking about, I want you to deny those appetites you got inside that soul. I want you to deny all your plans that you have for your life and say, God, what is it that you put me here for for you? So I, there is a story of a guy who was pastoring a church because he thought that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to do it. I'm pastor and I told God, I don't want to do it. This one said, I want to do it. He was chasing after it. And then he started doing it. And guess what? People were coming. And then one day, the Lord spoke to him and said, um, <clears throat> I never called you to pastor. <laughs> Why? He's pastor. <laughs> Isn't that something? <laughs> and he says, I called you to do medical missions. And guess what the man did? He gave the church up to a real pastor and he went to medical missions and he now came alive. <laughs> now he's smiling, marriage happy. He is so blessed. The presence of God is on everything he's doing because he is now dead. And he came alive because of that decision. So let me let me uh, give you this and then we're almost done. So he says in verse uh, 25, for whosoever will save his life shall do what? Y'all see that? The moment you try to save it, you lost it. The moment you tell the Lord, Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to marry this person. I don't care what you say, God. This is my life. I'm going to do it. God said, go ahead. You just lost it. So when all hell break loose, he still say, I love you, but um, you did lose. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years of your life because you didn't die. And his grace is so amazing, he'll still sit there and let you come right back around. <laughs> Lord, I messed up. I know you did, but listen, I love you again. Let's start this all over again. Can you go into the ground now so the thing I really put aside, you can come out? So he gives you another chance and then watch this. Guess what we still do? After he just, we just came through that hell, then he tells us now to do what he called, and we, he like, oh, you still didn't learn. Let's take another lap in the wilderness. So now we're walking in the wilderness again. Do, 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 do. Oh, God, Lord, why are this, where, why things, blessings ain't coming? Okay, here, here, let's stop here. Go dip in, in, in the ground. <sighs> All right, Lord, but that, but that, look at that dirt, Lord, that, that's, that's manure. I don't want to jump in that. God says, I know how I made you. What's inside you can't come out until you go in there. All right, Lord. <sighs> Can you make it a little warmer first? For, uh, see, now we can bark up a guy. Guess what? Years are tacking. Tick tock. Years are ticking away again. Okay, Lord, now I want, well, well, Lord, show me somebody else who died so I can get excited. So he sends you people like Pastor Alice and Vivian. They were living somewhere else. Why did they get here? That's called dying to yourself. And if they did not do it, y'all would not be here and the lives that they just saved in December. It's all because they died. That's what death looked like. So there is stuff inside y'all. There is books inside y'all. There is, some of y'all are gonna be open in ministry. Some of y'all gonna be doing some great stuff, but nobody know it because you're sitting on a shelf trying to save yourself. So I'm to, my assignment today is get excited about dying. Not one hand clap in the building. <laughs> 
All right, so we go, we go do a deaf clap. <laughs> now, now, I'm telling you, if you understand, though, what's inside you, you go die quickly. When he began to, now, right now, I'm not the type to go like this no more. When he started telling me stuff, I just jump in. Because I'm realizing the quicker I get in there, the quicker what's inside me releases. So when I was eating those little grapes and stuff, I said to myself, oh, my God, somebody had to pull this stuff in and take that seed off the shelf and go, bloop. And then watch this. And then they cover the seed with the dirt. Pat it down in there. <laughs> So I had vision and dream. I was like, I knew in my 20s I was going to be married. I knew it. I'm like, you know, I was going to get married when I was about 21. And, and I, that was my plan. I'm like, me and this young lady, we were going to get married at 21. And, and you know, I'm, I, I was in a church and I, I was like, we're getting married. And thank God. And, and, you know, now I can say it's a blessing. But all of a sudden something happened and she broke up with me. I was hurt. Why did this happen? I thought she loved me. <laughs> But it was the biggest blessing. Because if I would have gotten married in my 20s, I would have saved my life. And the guy who's talking to y'all today probably wouldn't be here because I probably would be in jail by now. <laughs> From all the fighting that we were doing even before we was even thinking about getting married. Because I didn't have the character. Mm, mm, mm. So God says, I'm going to help you so much because you are about to make the dumbest decision. And if you make this decision, nobody will be blessed by you because you go spend all your time in your life trying to fix a dead thing that I'm not even in. All your energy that you're supposed to be blessing thousands is going to be put into a marriage that I didn't even ordain. Mm, mm, mm. I feel God's presence in this place. So he was actually blessing me when she broke up with me. And we crying and God says, you're dying. I was in so much pain and you know what that pain led me to? This is the funny part about it. That breakup, she in that situation, all my friends turned against me because they listened to her story of this, her side of the story. Nobody asked me what happened, but everybody listened to her and everybody turned against me. So I went through a season of suffering, loneliness. So guess what I did during that time when I had no friends to go out with? Somebody take a guess. I started reading the Bible. I didn't even know I was a teacher. God knew it, though. So he let the breakup lead me to my purpose. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> so I'm in here in my bedroom crying. <sighs> and the only thing, by that, by that time, we didn't have cable at the house I was living at, and we didn't have social media, so I, I had nothing else. I just had a book in front of me. I was like, well, let me read this thing. And I started reading it. And re oh, ooh, that's, that was in there? I didn't know that. And I'm getting all into it. And I locked myself up in the room for three days, and I read the uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and, uh, and the book of Acts in three days. I was flying. And I'm like, and all of a sudden, I had this desire to pray. Then I had a desire to go to church and seek God. Then I had a desire. This all was happening at 21, 22. Then next thing you know what? I got enrolled in Bible school. And then I started taking classes. And then when I started dying and saying, God, I want to get more of you, all of a sudden I get a desire to teach the word of God, which was in me already as a seed. But I was on a shelf in a dumb relationship. And that is why people so y'all see this mental health crisis we have in our world? This is not in other countries. I hope y'all know that. When something is not in other countries, that means there is a demonic spirit that's hitting a specific area. So what y'all seeing, these mass shootings, all that, there is a demonic spirit that is targeted to the United States. And so when we see this mental health crisis, this identity crisis, you want to know why people are losing their mind? It's because they won't die. Because if they knew what was inside them, I promise they wouldn't blow their brains out. <laughs> if they knew what was inside, I promise they wouldn't just settle for any, any joker that want to marry you. So my plans was to get married in my 20s, and I got married in my 40s. It, it is better doing it his way than 
And I'm like, it ain't no way in the world I would have met a woman like her if I would have tried to save my life. Because the life I was trying to save, I was, I was picking the crazy ones. I'm, I'm not saying nobody here is crazy. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> like, I was picking the ones, seriously, I would pick the ones that would, you know, what'd you say? What, what? Say that again. Say that again. I'm like, okay, okay, hey, hey. All right, okay. <laughs> Those are the types I was like, I'm gonna marry one of them. God was like, you, you need to die because you don't know what you asking for. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But, but what I'm trying to say <laughs> is that <laughs> I would have known the life that God had for me unless I fell into the ground. And I promise y'all, I am telling y'all right now, I will leave y'all with this and then I'm gonna close this Bible and we go pray. Because I do have another service to go to. I wanna say this. When I was saving my life, Jesus says something. He says here, um, man, y'all made me turn the page. Look, look at y'all. Mm. Y'all just got me so excited. I just turned, I closed my Bible messing with y'all. All right, in ver in, look what he says. So he says in verse uh, Matthew 16, he says in verse 25, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. So the purpose you're looking for is going to be when you lose your life for his sake. Now, look what he says, the scripture that many of us uh, know in verse 26. For what is it a man, what is a man profited? What do you gain if you get the whole world and lose your own soul? What is so valuable that you are given exchange of your soul. Somebody name one thing that is worth forgetting, dying, and giving your life up to Jesus. What, give me one thing that's, that's worth not doing it. So why is it taking us so long to die? What is it that's holding us back from dying? Honestly. Can y'all think of anything with a community of people like this who's dying with you, it should be easy to die. <laughs> so who are here ready to die with me today? We, so that's why the scripture says we die daily. So every day you wake up, you dying again. You go wake up again, die again. So when those emotions, that anger, the, the bitter, all that try to come, I, I, the, the flesh lusted against the spirit. The spirit does not want me to operate this way. I'm gonna keep this thing. Holy Spirit, I need you to give me self-control. Because I am going to die to your will. I'm going to have to ask everybody to stand. We're going to pray. And I'm just going to ask you to.